God says He knows the plans that He has for you. And He actually wants to let you in on them if you will just let go long enough and stop trying to orchestrate it yourself long enough that you will stop and you'll say, God, how do I partner with you and with what you're already doing? Because I promise you He's already doing something and He's going to do it anyway. What's up, fam? It is your boy, JJ, in the Heart of Dating podcast. <laughs> I do have a co-host. I think she's here today. Yeah, it's Kate. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's up, everyone? What's up, girl? How's it going? What's up, bro? How's it going? It's good. How's it going, my man? Um, so at this point, I think we're still on maternity leave. <laughs> yes. Hopefully we have a healthy baby in our arms. <laughs> yes. But that's not what we're talking about today, is it? No, we are talking, we're flashing back to two months ago when we had the most incredible time at HODC Nash and we got to welcome a guest that I had you know, always dreamed of having on because her story I heard in my singleness and it just so empowered me and encouraged me in my faith and in my prayer life towards my future husband. And so today we're actually do like, we're playing our conversation that we had with Mia Fields, which is you guys, it is such a good conversation. It was by far people's favorite at conference, right, honey? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty inspiring. I think regardless of relationship status, mm -hmm. I think just being around such a legend of the faith, mm -hmm. someone who just embodies the word faith, which is right. Seeing and believing in the things that don't really maybe make sense at the moment. And, yeah. you know, I think, uh, anytime I hear Mia talk on anything, I'm just, I'm just inspired and challenged by her. Yeah. But specifically in singleness, I mean, what an amazing story, right. That I think God really ordained for the gift of us having encouragement and hope in our own story. Yeah. This this talk today and what Mia shares is is I mean, she's really honest, you know, and she I love that about her. She just says things like for the sake of the kingdom and doesn't really care if you don't like it or not. And it's awesome. And she shares parts of her story of her journey of singleness into her thirties, her faithfulness, um, the reignition of hope in her life, how she battled with disappointment. And so I think you guys are really, really, really going to love this and be touched by it. And on top of today's episode, I also want to push you to listen to the talk she did years ago called a beautiful story. You can probably just Google Mia Fields, a beautiful story and the talk will come up. It came out, I think in 2017 or 2018. And that's when I heard it was so, so, so inspired. And so listen to both, listen to today's episode. Also listen to that one. It's going to really, really bless you. Hey, also, we want to let you know about our Patreon family, right, honey? Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you guys want to support this podcast, get in with all the cool, fun things happening in Patreon. Like we just did a live blind date matchmaking event. Okay. Hello. Um, you can join us for as low as $5 a month, you get tons of fun bonuses. So just go to patreon.com forward slash heart of dating. Okay. And lastly, before we jump in, stealing your thunder, we have a free resource to give to them. Today. Oh yeah. Which one is it today? Are you ready to date guide? And how do I find that one? You can go to heartofdating.com forward slash resource forward slash ready to date. And it takes you through multiple questions to really analyze if you're in a really good place to date or maybe not. Did you fill one of these out? No. <laughs> At no point? <laughs> no, but these are questions I have learned throughout the years. What's your favorite one? I don't know. Don't you don't remember? Ah, oh my gosh, I'm sweating right now. Well, we you did a whole episode spot. over this. It's okay. Oh. Okay, heartofdating.com slash resource slash ready to date. Let's go. Okay, everyone, enjoy the episode today. Take this as your sign that you should just be in person for the next one. Next, yeah, next year. 2025, baby. All right, let's hear it from Mia Fields. I just want to see a show of hands in the room. Mia did um, a talk years ago that when I was single, like Lise was just talking about, I, I listened to. And so who here has heard Mia's story before this moment? Many, many people, lots of cheers. Okay, great. Um, so you guys, we're going to get snippets of it tonight, but I really want to encourage you to go 
check out her full story. If you've never heard it before, it's amazing. Mia, it's so amazing. But um, please go listen to it. You're going to want to after you get a little taste tonight, so I'm just throwing that in there. Um, so I want to ask you the first question. Yeah, go for it. Okay. As I was re-listening to your story the other week, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. I listened to this in singleness. Now listening to marriage, I'm like, I'm still so encouraged because the major theme I saw in your story was of God's faithfulness and of your commitment to God's faithfulness. But it didn't always start that way in, in terms of you had a lot of challenges growing up and there were so many different things. You're, want, you're a triplet, for example. Yeah, I'm an identical triplet. <laughs> and um, I was the not good looking one. If you, like, I'm like, how is that possible? Like, we look the same. But I was the like, the one with cystic acne who was very unpopular. Like I, at school, it was like, the Jehovah's Witness kid than me and then everybody else. Like, and then like, I didn't like, I was like, I was just a very weird kid. Like I, you know, some people were trying to get the Jennifer Aniston haircut from Friends. I got oh, the Ricky yeah. Lake haircut. It's just foolish. Anyway, and then everyone played cool instruments at school. I played the tuba, which is not a very, like, it's not like very attractive instrument to play. So Wait, so the tuba thing was real? I thought that was a joke. No, it's not a joke. I can play the tuba. I'm like the, <laughs> that cucumber off VeggieTales. Yeah. yeah. Is that what started your love for music, playing the tuba? Yes. <laughs> I love that. In fact, it did. Oh I, until I realized you can't write songs very well on a tuba. <laughs> so... We may have to get you to bust that out one of these times, okay? Okay, the next time I come, I'll bring a tuba. <laughs> But even with that, with with being the not as cute triplet, as you say, and growing up not super wealthy, feeling like the outsider maybe in school and playing the tuba, being more nerdy, um, you still started on a journey of even all of that prepared you into God's faithfulness. Tell us a little about that. Honestly, um, you know, I think there's so much pressure from society that you're going to look this way, or you're going to like be this age, or you've got to have this going for you, have that going for you. And I think the whole time God is speaking into every single one of our lives and trying to write something that is so unique and so intentional for every person. And the hard thing is, is if you start looking at everybody else's story and wanting their story, then it, it, it dulls the voice of God where you can't hear Him for your own story. And you know, for me, from a very young age, I started... I started actually just going to the Word of God because I didn't feel like I had a lot going for me in, in a bunch of other senses. And so I went to the Word of God and I would read things like, you know, many are called and few are chosen. And I would read things like that and I would come into agreement with it in my heart, you know. And I think, you know, today we're going to, at the end of this session, we're going to do like a little bit of, um, a bit of inner healing. And we're going to come out of agreement with some lies that we've all come to believe and come into agreement with some things that God actually has said about us. Because I think the biggest thing is like not being in agreement with things that aren't true. And it's really easy to be in agreement with, with a lie because it comes so subtly. Does that make sense? Um, so I had seen God really move in, in so many areas of my life. You know, I grew up in a town of 3,000 people. I was an identical triplet and I was like the untalented, not good looking one. And when I say untalented, like, you know, we would, we would be in like a school play and my sisters would be the lead characters and I would be tree number four. Now, I was a great tree number four, very convincing, but, you know, it's obviously not the role that I wanted. Um, but I, you know, I started just believing God and just... You know, I think faith is a very scary thing. Sometimes for people, very mystical. Um, faith isn't copying what somebody else is doing. Faith is being convinced that God is as good as He says He is. You know, and, and I think, you know, one thing I say all the time is you have to go to God for a promise because if you don't have a promise, you've got nothing to stand on. You've got nothing to contend for and you've got nothing to be in agreement with. You know, and when like, when things come at you and, and when the horizon line looks completely empty, you've got nothing to like, to hold up and say, but God said, you know. And I think that's really important that we start praying not for a promise, but from one. Does that make sense? You know, so um, I had seen God move in every single area of my life. You know, I, when I was like 13 or 14 years old, I started saying, God, I want to write songs that go all over the world. Now, my first, now I played the tuba, so obviously I was on the, on the path to songwriting. Um, but my first songs were rap songs and they were very terrible. Like, they were so bad that I'm not going to do them they right were, now. They were can, rap we, songs. can we get a sample? 
you know what? We'll maybe like sample it and then upload it as a freebie, like for you guys. Yeah, like, um, would you guys but, want that? But you know, like I, you know, I did, I'm not one of those stories where it's like, oh, she was just super talented. I'm a story really of perseverance, where I believed God and I and I just I took the little that was in my hands, and I and I stewarded it really well, and God multiplied it again and again and again. And I saw that in every area of my life except for one, and it was the area of um, romantic relationships. I love that. I love that because a lot of times, you know, I want to double tap into the disappointment of that, right? That's a big part of your story. Everything is going well and all of a sudden disappointment comes in. So two questions. Did you feel like that maybe amplified lies in your past? Like a lot of times in inner healing, we're kind of getting this narrative that's actually started long before you started dating, right? Of unworthiness or being unaccepted or not worthy or beautiful. Or did you encounter new narratives, new lies, new disappointment in that romantic area of dating? You know, I think the enemy is like a one-trick pony, you know, and and he he'll come at it from different angles, but usually like the usually the lie is the same thing. It's just like presented differently. So for me, it was just um, because it it had been like, you know, I think everybody in the room can probably relate to like hope being deferred makes your heart sick, you know, and everybody in the room can relate to when you've had an experience of something and it repeats itself, it's really hard to not believe this is going to be your experience and what you've experienced in the past begins to become the filter for your future, you know, and that really is what disappointment is. It's a filter that things are not going to work out. And so like for me, one of the things was like this area where, where I had not seen God move, you know, it was an area where I wanted I wanted a breakthrough and I wanted it to be a God thing. But I also was so disappointed that even if God had have done something in my life, I probably wouldn't have acknowledged that it was Him anyway. And so the very first thing that God did for me was God God highlighted something. And, um, you know, I go to a church here called The Belonging and we started, you know, if it's in, if it's any encouragement to you, we The Belonging used to meet in this building and I actually met my husband in this building. So you never know who you're sitting next to. Make sure you smile at someone. Because um, that's what I did. I smiled at him and then I smiled a little bit more. Wait, can you can you show us the smile you gave him? Or? Well, he says that I did this. He says that I did like, like, <laughs> which to I be mean, fair, it's something that I would do just to see what his sense of humor was like. But I, I, what I actually did was I saw him and I was like, good Lord, who's that? And then I smiled and then I thought, oh no, don't smile at him because he'll think you're smiling at him. And then I went, oh, hang on. No, I want him to think I'm smiling at him, <laughs> which girls, pro tip, guys, like, I don't like giving pro tips on dating, but here's a pro tip. Stop thinking that you're being, like, obvious when you're not being obvious. Because guys, they're not dense, but they also, like, need a bit of encouragement. I'm not calling guys dense. I'm saying, like, if, if, if you're not letting them know and then you're just making up a narrative in your head and, like, you've got to talk about it with six girlfriends to be like, does he like me? Well, you know, I walked past him and, like, I batted my eyelashes and, like, you know, I'm pretty sure he saw and then, like, you know, he liked this thing on Instagram and so blah, blah, blah. Um, if you have to do that, it's probably, he probably doesn't know. So, like, at least, like, put yourself out there and smile. Don't be a little predator, but smile at him. Um... Anyway, so beginning days of belonging. I um, I was like, we were like five people in um, our pastor's basement and, you know, they said, you know, God wants to do something tonight. And for me, God, God really spoke to me and he said, I want to heal the sickness with no name. And it was something like where I was like, I know this is God because it's not something I would pray. It's not something I would even like even think, you know, and, and God showed me that I had this disappointment in my heart that had gone down so deep that it has, was turning into something else. And, you know, I think disappointment is like the cancer of the church. You know, it's hard to diagnose until it's like very obvious. And, you know, one of the things that God asked me to do before he, he even started, you know, this work of like orchestrating Joran and I to be together, like, the thing that he started doing was to change my filter from disappointment to hope and disappointment to expectation. And honestly, that's what God wants to do with some of you here. More than any tips you've heard, more than any like advice you've heard, and all of it's fantastic. But more than that, some of you are in this building because God actually wants to just put his finger on something and say, you're so disappointed that you're looking for other options and looking for other ways to make this work. And I'm the one that's going to make it work. I love that. And part of your story, you also talk about 
you know, building a vision and being courageous and really trusting the Lord. And my question is this, and I wrote it down, so I have to read it because it's complex. What would you say is the difference between building a hope, between a hope built on godly vision or a godly dream and hope versus hope built on our desires or our dreams? Have you ever considered that your desires are God's desires? Mm. You know, I think we have like this like thing of like, if it's a ministry thing or if it's a very spiritual thing, then God is very interested. But if, if it is marriage or babies or like something that is so self-serving, then like, no, it's not. You know, marriage is totally God's idea and God is obsessed with marriage. God loves it. And so don't you think God loves the idea that like he would like orchestrate two people to be even more powerful for the kingdom, yeah. th- that he would orchestrate two people to be refining to one another, to like to build something strong, to like to create legacy. Like God's so passionate about legacy. He's passionate about like like children. He's passionate about family. Don't you think God is passionate about that? So as far as like building something that's like your own wishful thinking or building something that's from God, one thing I would say is, you know, I, you know, and you guys can go and listen to the full story if you want. But one of the things that happened for me was I was sitting right here and God gave me a vision because I said to God, I, I trust you and, and I'm, I'm believing for, for you to orchestrate something, but I want to know what you're doing. And, you know, God gave me a vision of a furniture warehouse. And, you know, sometimes you're like, is that me or is that God? But honestly, I'm not that creative. So, um, so I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here and like God gives me this vision of a furniture warehouse. And I look up and like God the Father is there and I'm looking out at this furniture warehouse and there's all these one-off pieces of like custom furniture um, that have already been made. You know, all these pieces that like no two pieces of furniture are the same. And I look up and God says to me, like, you can pick anything you want. Which for for me, you know, when I was in my mid-30s, like for God to say you can pick anything you want was so incredibly encouraging. Because I think, you know, society and even even your closest friends like and you and your relatives and all that sort of stuff will start to put these like caps on you and start to say well because of this and this these are now your options and God is just not like that you know you are never out of options with God and God is so good about like like saving things and hiding things and being so intentional about like no you 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 haven't missed out you you don't have to like pick from like like the leftovers, that's just not how God is. Like that's a silly mentality. And if someone has said that to you, then to be honest, I would get the haters out of the room, which is very important if you're trying to stay in faith. Jesus kicked people out of the room when they didn't have faith because it actually affects the atmosphere of what you're believing for. So I'm sitting I'm sitting here, God, I see God the Father. He says, you can pick anything you want. So he takes all the limits off. And I start walking around this furniture warehouse and like every time I would see something that I felt like, yes, yes, this is it. Somebody would get to it before me. And to be honest, that was my experience in dating. Like I'm, I'm talking, well, I'm not even gonna go into it, but that was my experience in dating. And I remember walking around and even things I would feel good about and no one got to it before me, I would still have this like kind of check in my spirit. And I would think, no, this is just not it. And I, I remember in the vision going back to God and saying, God, I, I, I don't feel like anything here is for me. And unless you're going to pick with me, I don't want to do this. Like, I want you to pick with me. And God the Father smiles and He says to me, you know, Mia, everything here is good. You know, I'm the one that made everything here. And so there are things here that are better for you than other things. And He said, it gets up real close to me and He says, But if you want me to pick with you, I'll custom make it for you. He says, not everybody wants me to pick with them. And he goes, and that's okay. He said, it's all good. But he said, if you want me to pick with you, then I will custom make it for you. But that means you're going to be empty handed for a little bit longer because custom made things take longer. Are you okay with that? And I said, yes. And after that, the vision was over. So from that point on, instead of having like this wishful thinking or instead of like moving towards nothing, I have this thing, this one promise. And the promise that I'm now praying from is God is custom making something for me. You know, it's why I say it's so important to get a promise. So as far as like what's wishful thinking and what's God, it's incredibly important that you have a conversation with God. You know, God says He knows the plans that He has for you and He actually wants to let you in on them if you will just let go long enough and stop trying to orchestrate it yourself long enough that you will stop and you'll say, God, how do I partner with you and with what you're already doing? Because I promise you He's already doing something and He's going to do it anyway. But how powerful for you to be able to say, God, what are you doing and how can I partner with 
with you. Because for me, what it was, was like God said to me, the way you can partner with me is you can stay full of confidence and full of hope that I am custom making something and that you can walk it out well until the custom made thing arrives. And that meant like every time I would see someone, I think I might go talk to them. Like I would get this check in my spirit and, and God be like, I'm custom making it. Don't go and like buy it, buy a cheap piece of furniture. And I'm like, okay, okay. Um, so I think, you know, it's, it's really important that you, that you have your own relationship with God. And some of you are like, I don't know how to hear God. I'm like, do you have a Bible? Because there are plenty of promises in the Bible. In fact, there is plenty of stories of God orchestrating marriages, of God orchestrating relationships in the Bible. I'm telling you, I went to Israel during this whole season. I, do you think I went to the Ruth and Boaz field? Oh, yes, I did. And, and I get up on that field. Everybody from the tour goes away and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, yes, Lord, I'm going to have this story. Yes, you're going to orchestrate something amazing for me. I'm going to get my Boaz. And I'm telling you, it's important that you like actually partner with things that keep your hope up. You know, um, a big part of our story was like, like, you know, I talk about looking for evidence. What I mean by that is not copying a formula that I'm doing. I'm telling you, if you start copying a formula, you will get a very average version of what what God yes, is trying to do yes. because he's so intentional. He wants you to have your own story. You know, one of the things that I did was like, as far as looking for evidence, it was that I was looking for evidence of what God was doing, not what he wasn't doing. It's very easy to be like, well, you know, it's Christmas time and I'm alone again. And like, don't you think I had some Christmases where I was alone? I had plenty. And I moved on the other side of the world from my family. My whole family lives in Australia. So I had some pretty lonely Christmases. But instead of looking for evidence of what he wasn't doing, I started looking for evidence of what he was doing. Amen. And even when I couldn't find evidence of what he was doing, I would go back to the promise that he'd already given me, your custom making something. So I would go to Sephora and I would buy really good men's cologne because I thought, well, it's for someone. So I'm just going to get it and I'll save it until he's here. And now he's here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So you're saying you got this vision and started collecting evidence because it wasn't custom made and then Amazon primed, two day deliveried Amazon the next week. Amazon don't do custom, so ah. if you're getting the Amazon version, I would say it's probably been made cheaply and someone's profiting off it a bunch more than you think. That's right. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Um, so we love BetterHelp and it has served so many people in our community for years on end. And it's an awesome way to have affordable therapy and yes, Christian therapy. Even if you don't think that you have areas to heal, JJ, they probably do, don't they? I mean, you do. <laughs> and we're just huge advocates for don't let something become an external problem with another person in relationship and marriage before you start investing in yourself, right? Yeah. And investing. And, you know, it's out of humility that we admit that we have had trauma and things happen and we have lived in an imperfect world and we need help. Like us on an island with our Bible is not necessarily maybe going to work through all the trauma and inner healing that, that we, we have, need. right? Yeah. So we're huge advocates. BetterHelp has been an amazing partner with Heart of Dating, and we could not point you guys to a better direction than BetterHelp. Yeah. If you need help setting boundaries, if you need help processing your attachment style, so many things that come up in dating, definitely encourage you to try out therapy this year with BetterHelp. So today you can get 10% off your first month by going to betterhelp.com slash HOD. That's betterhelp.com slash HOD. Take care of yourself and check out BetterHelp. Talk about that timeline in between, you know, the vision and Joran, right? And what would be the key to saying, hey, God, you gave me this vision. You gave me this vision because I go to the Bible and we read about the vision of Joseph. We read about the vision of all these key people. And then there's these massive gaps of years and years and years. And for us, it's just so hard to comprehend that timeline. And it's been a month. It's been two months and we're frustrated and tired again. So collecting evidence, like looking for God, what would you say as the last question is the key to holding hope in that timeline between promise so, and delivery. Do whatever you can to stay in hope. Do whatever you can to kill disappointment. Do whatever you can to kill frustration and do whatever it takes to stay in hope. And if that means that you have to go and collect evidence or do something in the natural that partners with your faith in the spirit, then do it. 
you know, for me, um, you know, I had one day where I was, I was again sitting right here and our church was worshipping and like God said very loud and clear to me, it's in the mail. And I thought, yes. So I went on Restoration Hardware's website to look up how long custom-made furniture takes to get delivered. And it was like 12 weeks. And I thought, 12 weeks? Valentine's Day is in 12 weeks. And I was like, God's giving me a husband for Valentine's Day. This is amazing. Which is funny. We always think we know what God's doing and He's always doing something so much better, you know. But, you know, one of the things I did was like, it got to Valentine's Day and no mail turned up. And so I was like, oh. And then I remember being in here again and like, Chris came preaching on like, what do you do when you, when you get a promise from God and you reach the promise, but you hit a wall? And she talked about Jericho. So I went home to my, my mail building at my apartments and I marched around the apartments at midnight, 12 times, I know, seven times. And then I did a little shout at the end, like, ah, oh, like, and, <laughs> and I would love to tell you that Joran then pulled up in a truck and got out and was like, you, but that's not what happened. But I'll tell you what did happen. I saw it and God saw it. And you know, the next morning I got two messages from two friends who I hadn't heard from from a while. One was Brooke Fraser. And she messaged me, she said, this is so weird, but last night I had a dream about you getting married. The other one was from um, Jen Johnson. And she said, this is so weird, but one of the girls on our team had a dream about you getting married. So don't tell me that God doesn't see your, your act of faith in the natural partnering with the Spirit. It does. And after that, three months later, I get an email and it says, you, you probably don't remember me, but two years ago I saw you at your church and I've remembered you ever since. And I don't live in Nashville anymore, but I would love to take you on a date. And the Holy Spirit goes, told you it was in the mail. And I thought, oh, the email, that's so funny. <laughs> Honestly, God has a sense of humour and God wants it to be, God wants it to be fun. He wants it to be like exciting. He's as excited as you are about like the expectation of like stepping into that new season. And I, I just want to as well, just like break off like every kind of um, inhibition and every kind of like feeling of like shame or anything like that, that you have to like pull back a little bit or pretend like you don't want to be married or you don't want to be in a relationship as much as you do. Like that is a very stupid nonsense mentality from like 19 year olds who got married who are like, well, it'll happen when you least expect it and just wait on God. I'm sorry, girlfriend, you were 19 when you got married. You didn't wait on anything. So like, stop. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's actually wonderful. It's wonderful to keep your hopes up. It's wonderful to stay in expectation and it's wonderful to be excited. Do you know heaven will open up over your life massively if you can stay in joy and stay in gratitude, stay thankful, start prophesying over your life. You know, I went from God, please do this, to, to God, thank you that it's already done. I was in Israel and instead of going to the Wailing Wall and begging God to do something, I went to the Wailing Wall and I thanked Him that it was already done and I walked off. Like, because I was like, nah, sorry, I got a promise from God, that's as good as it's done, you know? And, and then every single time I felt like frustration, I would bring that promise back to God and say, you said, you know? And He would say, yeah, I said, and I'll do it. Be patient. And I went, okay. That makes sense. Amen. 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 Oh Let's go. <laughs> God, so, God said this is the... 21st century, I so use email do too. Email instead of actual mail. Like, come on, how funny is God? It's in the mail. He's like, email. Huh? Yeah. Oh, hey. So we have tons of questions being sent in, and you guys can continue to scan the QR code and send in questions and vote on the question you want Mia to answer. But this one's already been upvoted a bunch. So, um, this is a vote. How cool. <laughs> what would you tell 30 year old Mia about dating? Oh, I'm maybe I'm about to be the Simon Cowell of the conference. <laughs> I'm about to shut down all the information that's been given to you. You know, I would say, number one, don't do things you don't have peace about. If you have peace about going on a bunch of dates, fantastic, do that. I never had peace about that, so I never did. I went on, I went on, I hadn't been on a date. When I met Joan, I hadn't been on a date in six years. And before that, I hadn't been on a date in five years. And before that, I hadn't been on a date in two years. I probably dated four people for about a week and a half at a time. And then I was like, Ugh. like, and you know, you'll have people give you bad advice and say it's your commitment issue. And like, and at the end of the day, it's between you and God. Like, and don't you think God's smart enough to get around your Enneagram number and smart enough to get around all of that? Like, to be honest, Enneagram is like Ankin in Hinduism. So there's just a little bit of free advice for you. Um, I know I'm not trying to mix religions as far as I'm concerned, but um, 
for me, I would say, I would say to her, like, don't settle. Like, yes, be willing. Yes, be open. But for goodness sake, don't settle. Um, like yourself. Genuinely like yourself. Because if you like yourself, you won't let somebody treat you in a way that it makes you feel less than you are. And I would, and this one's especially for girls. And Joran, you might have something you want to say to the guys. Um, but for the girls, don't try and fix somebody. Don't date somebody as a project. Because guys don't like it. And it's not good for your heart. Um, I, got, I got really good at not baiting boys for attention. You know, you shouldn't have to bait someone for attention. Guys are pretty good about seeing someone and being like her. Like, Joran was great about, like, and I had a lot of hot friends, so the fact that he saw me and was like her, I was like, is this proof that, like, at the end of the day, you don't have to, like, trick someone or convince someone into liking you. Right. It just, it'll have peace on it, you know. But the biggest piece of advice is that if it does not have peace on it, stay far away from it. Amen. Amen. You can clap. You can clap. (laughs) It only took Jordan two years to work up the courage, though, to finally send the message and to ask be fair, you out. To be fair, um, he actually moved to cities. Like, he moved two and a half hours away. And, he, and you know, sometimes that is a reason we're like, well, I was going to ask her out, but now, I'm, now I've moved two and a half hours away, so I guess, like, that's not an option. But props to him, because he went, you know what, actually... He kind of went on a few dates and was like, nah. And then he goes, you know what, the person I actually want to ask out is that girl in Nashville that looked at me at church and smiled at me in a very creepy way. <laughs> and, and you know what? He did. And for some of you, like, you, you know, it actually takes courage to do that. And girls really respect it. Like, I, I trusted him right from the outset because he was so bold, you know, yeah. because he was so bold and so, like, sure about about something like it wasn't like well hey maybe do you want to maybe go for coffee or like get on FaceTime and like see if this works he was like I'm gonna come to Nashville I'm gonna take you on a date and he drove down and he took me on a date and he booked everything and he picked me up and there's something about that like it's it's good to take a risk you know it's good to good to like go all out especially in today's day and age like lots of people are trying to do like a very like safe version because you don't want to like overdo it, you know? But I'm like, no, overdo it. Totally, totally. I tell guys all the time, be confident. If you want to ask her out, be confident You're better looking than you think you are. Amen, amen. We got some stud muffins in the house today too. Okay, so um, I love what you said earlier, talking about letting the predator out, right? But (laughs) Don't let the predator out. Don't be a predator. No, 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 no. But let's talk about this predator. How did you kill disappointment? How did you, you know, let that predator out and kill disappointment? I started celebrating things very well. I was always good at celebrating things, but, like, I started going to people's weddings, and I'd be like, what's the most expensive thing on the list? Awesome. I'm going to buy that as their gift. And I started being, like, very good about championing the, the season that I wanted instead of being like, I can't go to that wedding because I'm not married. That's a very petty way to think. You know, that's a way that, the way, that way of thinking is that God's got a pie and everyone gets a piece and I still haven't got my piece. God's giving everybody pie factories. Like, you're not going to miss out. Um, it's not like, oh, gosh, we're getting down to the last, the last ratio of males and females on the earth. It's a bit scary. <laughs> Like, no, God can bring someone from anywhere. There can be nothing on the horizon line and God can bring them from out of nowhere. Like, you can be sitting on your bed going like, well, I mean, here we are in July and like seven o'clock and there's nothing good on Netflix, so I guess I'm going to sleep and you can get an email saying, do you want to go on a date? I saw you two years ago. You just never know. Like, God will bring things. And honestly, I'm so grateful that I didn't date Joran two years before that because, like, there was things God was working out in me, you know, and especially that disappointment card. You know, I think that I would have just transferred that onto him where everything he did, I would be, like, just expecting him to disappoint me. Whereas when we started dating, that, like, that filter wasn't there. And so, like, it takes that whole, uh, like, an element out of the relationship that could be incredibly damaging to the relationship. Does that make sense? Okay. Someone else to tack on to that asked... um, how did you process grief with the Lord? What did that look like? I'm like, what's processing look like? I'm good at shoving it down. Um, I'm just kidding. 
I'm, I, I'm not, I'm great about like figuring out what I would do about something. I'm not great about figuring out about how I feel about something. But God's so kind because He He will walk it out with you. And so like when I was alone, God would, God would talk to me about things. And so much of it was about giving me permission to feel sad and giving me permission to feel a bit ripped off. Um, but permission wasn't like, yes, this is your new identity. Permission was like, hey, let's like walk, walk this out together and let's like give yourself permission to have a cry and say that really hurt. And, and you know, when I did, I felt like the Holy Spirit right there closer than ever saying, I understand. And I felt him talk to me about his heart in it. And, you know, his heart in it was like, I'm so sorry. That was never my intention for you. I never wanted you to feel that way. And there's something about that where God speaks and God says, I understand. And God validates that feeling that makes you go, oh, okay, I can leave this here now then. I can leave it. And and it also helped me to go like... I can, I can expect differently. I don't have to expect this is going to happen again. Because one of the things for me was, is I didn't, I, I didn't want to be so fearful about disappointment every time. Like I didn't want to, my experience was like, I would date a guy and it would be like, yes, I feel God on this. This is perfect. This is awesome. And then he would go and sleep with his girlfriend, his ex-girlfriend. Like, like I had one time where I went home with a guy to meet his family and he left for an hour and went and slept with his ex-girlfriend. I know. How wild is that? I'd love to tell you that was a unique experience. It was not. Like, so, you know, but I think it's good to be able to process with God, but then to also be able to lay it down. And and honestly, God's saying to me, you're never, ever going to be so disappointed that I can't go deeper and heal that. And I was like, okay, that made me feel like I had permission then to like walk into things being vulnerable because I probably wasn't great at being vulnerable in relationships Um, because I always wanted to make sure that if this doesn't work out, because I was expecting to be disappointed, if this doesn't work work out, I don't want to be a mess about it. I want to just be able to be like, well, whatever, you know? And the the season I met Joran in was I remember saying to a friend, I think I'm more willing to be hurt than I've ever been before. I think lots of us aren't willing to be hurt. Um, But that's what vulnerability is. Yeah, we talked about that last night. To be vulnerable means to be woundable. You're opening up and sharing things that are scary to show. I think you had a good question. Yeah, so this isn't one of the questions, but I really think it's going to encourage somebody in the room. Um, I want you to tell them just a little bit about the ring story. The ring story. Okay. (laughs) Um, I would encourage you, like normally I'm not like the marketer of like, yes, go and listen to this podcast. Like, I've only spoken about this once and um, people ask me to come and share this story a lot and I always say no because it's already on the internet and so somebody can just tell their friend who can tell a friend who can tell a friend, you can pass it around like that. But like it's actually like, you know, I think it's it will be an encouraging story to you because it shows you how involved God wants to be. So um, I remember, you know, how nasty Instagram is about algorithms. It's like you're, you know, you're believing a bit for a baby, and like it's like here's all the baby stuff, and you're like, yeah, but like I'm, I'm not pregnant yet. Like, or if you're believing to get married, it's like here's all the ads for like wedding dresses and like brilliant earth and all this sort of stuff, and you're like, um, rude. Um, so I was like very single, and like I was getting all these advertisements for like rings and I'm like so mean um but this this ring advertisement came up like probably two years before I met Jordan and um it was this one picture of a ring and I'm not really like every girl says I'm not really that girl who looks at rings but like you all ask to so stop um <laughs> Anyway, so this ring comes up and I'm like, wow, that is an amazing ring. That's the kind of ring I would want. Like, I'm, I'm not really one of those Tiffany's girls who wants, like, you know, a band and a rock. I don't want that. I wanted something that was, like, art deco and, like, very kind of specific. Like, I like it when it's, like, flat and long. And um, this ring came up and it was beautiful. It had three stones and it was long and it was kind of like, um, like a, kind of like a, a diamond kind of shape as far as, like, the metal. And I screenshotted it. And I was like, it's just so cool. Are you okay? You're choking, darling? Just my baby, just having a little choke, but she's okay. Um, so, so I screenshot it and it's from this company called Brilliant Earth and they do like vintage rings and stuff like that. So I was like, you know, I save it. And then a couple of days later, I think, I wonder how much a ring like that costs. So I go to Brilliant Earth to see how much it costs, but the ring sold. So I didn't get to see how much it costs. And it was a one-off ring. So I was like, well, dang. Well, I guess I'll just, you know, 
whatever. I forget about it. It's in my phone. Like the picture's in my phone. I forget about it. Take a bunch more pictures. Well, um, when, when Joran and I were getting engaged, um, this is a pro tip for girls, I did not bait him to proposed to me. I didn't like leave hints everywhere. I actually didn't even like be like, this is, this is the sort of ring I want. We never talked about the style of ring that I want because to be honest, like I don't want to propose to myself. I want somebody else to propose to me. Um, and if you don't like it, then like maybe don't get married because your boyfriend probably doesn't know you that well. So like, meh. Um, anyway, so to be honest, when Jorah proposed, I was kind of in shock. Like he proposed at Bar Taco. Because my dad, okay, if we've got time to tell this story, we've got time. We've got time, don't we, guys? Okay, so um, my, my family's in Australia, and so Joran um, messages my dad and says, um, hey, would it be okay if I FaceTime you later on? Uh, there's just something I want to ask you, which is, like, so American. Love it. Chivalry's not dead. Because um, he's going to ask my dad how romantic's that. Um, anyway, so he's got this whole plan about how he's going to do it, like do the proposal. My dad's like, oh, I don't know how to FaceTime, but I could Skype you. Classic dad. <laughs> anyway, and he's like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. And he's like, well, what do you want to ask? And, and Jordan's like, well, long story short, I want to ask Mia to marry me tomorrow. And, and he's like, oh, that's so great. And we're like at Bar Taco, like having some tacos or whatever. And, and my phone's like face down on the, on the, on the thing, the table. And so, like, he doesn't know that, like, I, I mean, I don't know what he's talking to my dad about him and I was texting my dad. My dad's so excited that he texts the family and says, oh, my gosh, like, um, Joanne's going to ask me to marry him tomorrow, but I'm on the group text. So Joanne's like, crap, I'm going to have to do it right now. <laughs> so we're, like, the last people left in Bar Taco and, like, and then, like, he goes, out, he goes, oh, can you come outside for a second? So I, I'd gone to the bathroom. He'd run outside and got the ring out of the car. And he goes, oh, can you come outside for a second? And I thought, oh, he maybe wants some Tylenol because, like, his, like, hip was hurting, like an old man, but it's because he's, it's because he can bench press 500 pounds. Um, but, like, so anyway, I'm thinking he wants some Tylenol. And so we go outside and he just gets down on one knee and goes, will you marry me? And my, my first instinct was like, why are you doing it now? Like this, because I was so shocked. And he goes, oh, well, I'm just doing it now because, but, but will you? And I was like, oh my God, yes. Like, then I look at the ring and I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. It was that ring. Like, and it's a one-off ring. Like, I'm, I'm, I mean, if you guys could get a close-up of this, like, it's, it's a pretty unique ring. Like, it's not the sort of ring you see every day. And everyone's like, well, how did he know? And I'm like, I don't think he did. I think God knew. And I think God wants to give you those little winks from heaven that says, I saw it all. Like, I did not miss a single thing. I, I noticed everything. And detail for detail, I had this down. And I'm telling you, if, if you are not willing to, like, wait for a story like that, then I recommend you just go and marry the first person and make it work. But why would you have the average version of something when you can have the custom version of something? And I'm telling you, the thing about custom, the thing about custom is it just fits. Here's, here's a cool little detail. So my name is Mia Fields. Well, it was. It's Mia Donovan now. Um, my name is Mia Fields, and that, like, that literally means my field. Um, do you know that the name Joran means farmer? You know, and a farmer and a field always belong together, you know? So, like, don't tell me God's not detailed. Don't tell me He doesn't want to orchestrate something incredibly kind. And if you knew our whole story, you would know that there is, there is detail after detail after detail. Like, if Joran could tell his side of the story and we had time, like, he would tell you that he used to go walking around this field and say, God, I don't, I, I've been so disappointed by women. I don't know that I want to get married. And God would give him a picture of me. God, God will move in it however much room you make. If you want to do it all on your own and all in your own strength, then believe me, you'll be doing it in your own strength through your marriage, with your children, until you like until your last breath. But if you want God to step in and move, believe me, He wants to. And you know, I say this all the time. There are so many people in this room, you believe God can and He will. But there's so many people in this room that don't genuinely, genuinely believe that He really wants to. I'm telling you, God wants to. The desires that are in your heart, they're not silly, they're not fickle, they're not something that's just like, oh, like maybe I should lay this down. The Bible doesn't say anything about, about laying down the things that are in your heart. 
The Bible says lay down your flesh and kill your flesh. It doesn't say anything about laying down your dreams. It says, you know, you can bring those dreams to God and you can bring your cares to God and He really cares for you. And I mean, I don't know if you guys are cool with this, but, you know, I would love to pray for you guys. I would love to have just a bit of time in ministry if that's okay. So wherever you are, like, do you want to just stand to your feet? You guys can start playing. You know, I don't think there's anything magical. Like, I don't think it's like... You know, lots of people say to me, can you pray for me about my spouse? And I can do that. But you know, the most powerful person for you to pray is yourself. You know, I can't work harder on your breakthrough than you're willing to. And, um, but I can be in agreement with you. And I can bring you a testimony and say, look what the Lord has done. And a testimony is, is, a, is a literal thing that you can hold out and, and say, God, do it again. Not the same way, but God, do it again. But for some of you in this room, you've come to this conference and you've been so willing. And so, you know, some of you, you've done it as an act of obedience where you've been like, God, this feels uncomfortable. I don't really want to, but I'm going to. And first of all, I just want to, I just want to commend you so much. It's not an easy thing to say, okay, I'm willing. But you're all here and you're all willing. But I think the thing that God wants to do so that you can see what He's really doing is I think He really wants to go after some things this afternoon so that He can get rid of the delays. Because sometimes the delay is like the disillusionment that we've got, you know, and the filter that we've got. So wherever you are, I just want you to close your eyes. And if you would, just put your hands in front of you, just as an act of like, God, I'm, I'm willing, I'm still willing. I just want you to ask God right now, God, I'm here to partner with you. So whatever it is, whatever this thing is that's like, that you want to put your finger on, would you do that right now? I just, I believe that there's someone, maybe there's more than one person here. You're believing the lie that you made a mistake a long time ago. I'm talking like about 12 years ago. You made a mistake 12 years ago and you're believing that you're being punished for that mistake and that God is withholding because of that mistake. And right now, I just want to break off that lie. It is a lie from the pit of the enemy. And right now we come out of agreement with it and we come into agreement with the truth that the plans that God has for you are for your future to be full of joy, full of hope, full of like His legacy, full of His kindness, that you would be surprised by joy in this season. And right now we just we just take that lie and we throw it back to the pit of hell. There's someone here who like your experience is like my experience where you've been disappointed over and over and over again. And right now we just, we push back disappointment. We say, we say to the cancer of disappointment that you will find no place here. We pull it out by the root in Jesus' name. For someone else, there's, you know, you, you heard me talk about hearing from God and you're like, yeah, but my whole story has been silenced from God in this area. And so right now, Jesus, I ask that you would speak, God, that your audible voice would be would be heard, God, that your prophetic voice would be heard. God, where there has been silence, God, I pray that there would be the whisper of heaven, God, that it would be clear, that it would be audible. The Heart of Dating podcast is created by Kate and JJ Tomlin. Shout out to our epic audio and video editor, Scott Caro. We have an amazing Heart of Dating team who helps bring the show to you each week. I want to shout out Kelsey Napier, our Heart of Dating digital marketing coordinator, and Elena Gibson, our brand and community manager. We couldn't do it without them. Now, if you guys have never ranked us or reviewed us on iTunes or Spotify, would you consider doing that? It would mean so much because our podcast can get more discovered and more people can learn how to better date as Christians. Don't we all want that? We launch our podcast each and every week on Wednesdays. So we will see you next week.